OC Financial Media presents in association with CHL Mortgage, bringing you the top business experts in Southern California, from LA to Orange County. Your host, Dino Katsimetis. It's about your real estate. It's about your money. From your estate to real estate, it's Money Matters with Dino. Welcome to Money Matters with Dino, the most important hour of radio for Southern Californians every week. My name is Dino Katsimetis, and I want to thank you for joining today's conversation. The purpose of this show is to educate you regarding your money. In this crazy up and down market, you must understand and adopt the mind of an entrepreneur to survive. You must anticipate what's coming next and understand what it means for your bank account. You must become financially secure. That's why I'm here, to make sure you're making the best financial decisions for you and your family. How do I do this? I seek out top professionals in the marketplace and I have them share their years of experience and knowledge with you. Here's something I love to say and you're going to hear me say it often. Wealth is created by taking informed risks and we're going to teach you how. I hope you enjoy the show. Before we get into the the next segment here and, and introduce our panel of experts, I want to also throw out the new service we're offering if you want to know the value of your home just text the word appraisal and your address to 313131 that's text the word appraisal and your address to 313131 and i'm going to have one of my trusted advisors get back to you within 24 hours so phil before we start because i want to i want to again just mention the reverse mortgage educators they're uh, they're sponsoring this segment and I know if you haven't heard the the show with them before, I think they're coming on either in a couple of weeks or something like that. I'll, I'll let you guys know through the website and Facebook, but I was truly educated by them. I'm in the business, but I got to admit, I really didn't know anything about reverse mortgages. And if you're 62 years of age or older and you're not living as comfortably as you should and you own a home, I, I beg you to take a look at this. And I'm not saying it's right for you. I'm just saying you have to look at it, educate yourself, because there are easier ways to live out the final years of your life. And there's no reason to be living in poverty. Um, reverse mortgage educators, look them up online or give me a call direct and I will speak to you about the matter. It's 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. All right, today our show is the mastery of structuring real estate deals for profit. And we have two fantastic people here, both returning um, for the second time, I think uh, third time for Dino Champagne. And and I'm not just making that name up. We actually have another person here called Dino and her last name is Champagne. So her name is way cooler than mine. Dino, welcome to the show. Thank you, Dino. Tell us a little bit about what you do. You're the 1031 expert, but what what does your company do exactly? All right. Uh, asset preservation. We are a national 1031 qualified intermediary, which is also known as an accommodator. Uh, our firm has been around since 1990. We have facilitated about mm, 150,000 exchanges nationwide. We work with Fortune 100 companies. We work with REITs. We work with all the way down to the mom and pop investors. Uh, we cover all 50 states. Uh, we are also a wholly owned subsidiary of, uh, of, a, of Stewart Title Company, so they back what we do. So that's who we are as a company. So we have a lot of experience uh, in this little particular niche of the real estate industry. Well, thank you for coming. And, and I want to say just from my own personal experience after I met Dino, every time I had um, a client or somebody call in regards to a 1031 and asking questions or they had this advice from somebody else, I would just call Dino immediately and ask her, and sure enough, they were always getting bad advice. And what I've discovered in this this sector of the real estate market is that most people don't know what the heck they're talking about. I mean, they are so off the majority of the time. They just they have a couple key words that they've memorized, and uh, as long as it's like property and you know a couple other little things, they think they got the the law situated, and it's going to come back and really bite you on the butt. So. 
Um, do not make big decisions like that without truly seeking proper legal advice. Um, so Dino, thanks again. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Aaron Mazrillo. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you, Dino? I'm good. I'm good. So Aaron is, uh, I've known him for a really long time. He started off as, as a client um, trying to refinance his house. And, uh, and then he was, I don't want to call him a punk kid, but, but if you had seen him, he kind of just looked like a punk kid. He kind of still does even. But, but the man had such a passion for real estate. He literally read every single book, listened to every single tape, went to every single seminar. And I'm, I mean like every single one. And, and I remember he used to call me up and say, can I come buy you lunch? And we would go across the street from my office, the Hard Rock Cafe was there at the time, and, yep. and he would just uh, ask me a bunch of questions. And I'm like, well, I get a free lunch and get to talk about real estate. <laughs> I love it, I'll do it. So now, um, years later, probably, I don't know what, oh, it's 12, be at least 13, 10, yeah, more, yeah. yeah. It's been a uh, while. At least a decade later, I have a lot more gray hair. Aaron, I saw, has a little bit of I got a lot of gray hair. hair. It's, it's light, so it, it hides really well, but there's, <laughs> it, there's a lot going on up in there. <laughs> yeah, and, and now the, the man has bought and sold so many houses, it's absolutely ridiculous. So o when I over say- Over 100. Over how many? Yeah, over 100. Over 100. Yeah. So when I say the mastery of structuring real estate deals, this is, this is it right here. He has come up with some of the most unique ways of buying houses. So Aaron, thank you. Welcome to the show. No, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I, I look forward to, uh, to picking your brain about a few things. But before we start with the questions, I want to ask you as well. You actually coach now, don't you? I, I do, yeah. I have a, a, a coaching program where I actually meet e small groups. I, I used to do probably 10 people at a time, but I've, I've gotten it down to where I just meet with two people at a time. Uh, so one or two at a time over a couple of days and try to get them up to speed with uh, being a real estate investor, going out and making some good deals in this market. And what's your website? It's AaronTheHouseBuyer.com. Wow, that's unique, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Very to the point. <laughs> AaronTheHouseBuyer.com. And we'll have all that on our website as well and on our Facebook. Um, so you can always look us up at MoneyMattersWithDino.com and we'll put all that information there. All right, let's get to the real deal and let's start with these, uh, with these questions. Um, Aaron, the, the crash um, of the real estate market is still something people talk about, but it, uh, it's making a comeback. Houses have been appreciating significantly and all that. Um, house flipping has always, the, the term has been used a lot. Um, is that something that is better during a crash or better during the, the, the peak of the market? How does, how does all that work? I, I think essentially it's good all the time. I, I don't really ever think there's a bad time to be in the business of buying and selling real estate. If you look at statistics for house sales in 05, 06, 07, uh, I think the bottom was probably 09. People were still buying houses. There were plenty of people out there who were, they looked at the market and they thought, well, maybe this is the bottom. So they jumped in. And I continually bought and sold houses throughout that entire period. I never lost money in any of those deals. And actually my most profitable deals came in that time period of 07, 08, 09, because people wanted to get out. They were terrified and they were just, they just wanted to, to be done with it, to get out of the house. And I was able to structure and put together some of my most profitable deals at, at that time frame, and I think if you, as long as you pay attention to the numbers, you you can always make money in real estate. It's always a great time to buy. And the reason being is, you know, people talk about, oh, well, they're not making any more land. That's not the reason. The reason is people always need a place to live, so they can forego a lot of the other things. But at the end of the day, they either need to rent a house or buy a house. There's no other options. I mean, they can go live on the street, but most people don't want to do that. Right. So. <laughs> So, so uh, I guess having a roof over your head and having something in your stomach are the two things we can't ever get away from. Yeah, it's like uh, shelter, food, and water. Isn't that like <laughs> the three essentials of life three or something? Three essentials, yeah, coming right? from so, a Navy man. Yeah, so, so when I looked at, you know, what, I, what business do I want to be in? I used to be in the window business. Well, people don't necessarily need windows, right? <laughs> but they need shelter, so. All right, so, so guide us through the process of one of your deals. If you can, just give us a specific example of, of a house flipping deal that you did. Uh, perfect example. So my business, I don't shop out of the MLS. The MLS is the multiple listing service. That's when real estate agents get something under contract to sell. They advertise it in the MLS, 
And uh, that's, then, what, that's what everybody else does, basically. That's pretty much where the marketplace is for real estate. So my business, I focus on buying direct from private sellers. So I do a lot of marketing, a lot of direct marketing, online marketing, to attract motivated sellers to my business. Uh, my last deal that I did, I bought a house in Montclair from a woman, and uh, she had owned the house for many, many years, probably 30 years or more. She had let her daughter move into it. Now, this is inherently a problem because my number one rule of landlording is do not rent to family or friends. It always ends up bad. So her daughter's in the house. I don't even know if they're working. I've been over the house a couple of times while we were in the escrow and uh, they're home in the middle of the day. They're wearing sweatpants. I mean, that's never a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> so, so she just wanted the house gone. She didn't want to deal with her daughter anymore. She sold me that house for, I, I had sent her an offer, blind offer, hadn't seen the house for 175. I thought the house, could be worth about guaranteed 275, but somewhere around 275 to 290 if I did a really good rehab on it. So my blind offer is 175, and she called me up and said, "You need to go see the house." Now I'm very different than most real estate investors. I generally don't go look at what I buy. If if the number's good enough, I'll close. So I said, "I don't see houses. If you want me to buy the house, you have to put it in escrow. Then I'll go look at the house." And she's like, "No, you have to go see this house." So I said, "Okay." Uh, again, if you want me to buy the house, we have to go to escrow and then I'll, you know, then I'll go see it. And she's like, is your offer good? Does it stand? I said, yeah, it, it's a good offer. She's like, then go look at the house. So I said, okay. So as I'm leaving, my wife's like, why are you doing this? You always go, you don't get the house. Then you get very upset that you waste all this time. I said, I don't know. I have a feeling about this lady. I went and saw the house. It was a disaster. I mean, it was a mess. So I came back and, and I, and I was actually at the point where I didn't even at 175, I didn't even want the house, even though. You know, listeners probably think, wow, there's a hundred thousand dollars spread in there. But when you factor in a fifty, sixty thousand dollar rehab, sales costs of about ten percent, that's gonna cost twenty seven thousand. There's nothing left over for my sure. pocket, right? And there has to be something in my for my pocket for me to be interested. So I, I got her on the phone and, and I decided to go from the negotiation strategy is uh, I'm a don't want her. And I said, you know, I, I saw the house and I, I just don't think I'm interested. So in my mind, I'm thinking, man, if I can get her 150, then I'll take the house. That's a great deal. Like 125,000, there's enough room in there to do a bang up rehab, make this house, you know, the nicest on the block and get it sold in that weekend. So when I put a house in the MLS on a Friday night, I want it in escrow by Monday morning. I don't want to sit and wait. I'm, I'm not living in the house. I'm paying interest on the hard money loan. So it's, it's costing me money to hold this property. I want it sold quickly. So I'm thinking in my mind, man, if I can get her at 150 by pretending I don't want it, then maybe that'll work. And, you know, so I tell her, well, you know, I'm, I'm just not that interested. I, I mean, if what, what's the bottom line? What's the least you would take if I decided, you know, I'll buy the house? And she's like, well, you know, I'll, I'll let you have her for 145. So my, my <laughs> jaw dropped. And <laughs> what, what I should have did was say, well, you know, would you consider 140? But, <laughs> <laughs> but at 145, it was below what I was looking for. I said, yeah, okay, I'll take the house. And then I actually, I didn't even close on it. I wholesaled it to a friend of mine for 195. So I made $50,000 and I, and I never had to buy the house or put the money in. So that's interesting. And, and I understand it, but if you're listening and you don't understand what he just said, he wholesaled it. He just called up somebody else and said, I have a great deal. I've already structured um, the deal, put it together and I have some numbers for you and, and here's your price. And so essentially, yeah, they, I, I had a couple of people come in at 180, 190. I really wanted that 195. I knew I could get it. And I found a guy who said, yeah, I, I'll pay you 50,000 to 195 in order to take your place in the escrow. So instead of me closing, the deed goes out in their name, they close and, and I get the check. The difference. So they went and got a loan or paid cash, whatever. And then you got your fifty thousand dollars exactly oh, that's just beautiful absolutely beautiful well we uh we need a break for a commercial while you're pondering that uh that story um and many more to come here i want you to hang tight because there you're going to learn a lot from this show you're listening to money matters with dino and we can be heard every weekend afternoon if you have any questions whatsoever i want you to write this number down you can call me anytime it's 949-720 1616. That's 949-720-1616. Or you can check us out online at moneymatterswithdino.com. We'll be right back after the break. Fifty years ago, you didn't have any worries. You danced the night away. But the music slowed down. And now you have financial worries and woes you never thought you would be faced with in retirement. I'm so afraid that my husband and I aren't going to be able to afford to live in our home. 
Thousands of people have chosen to put a spring in their financial step by taking advantage of a government-insured reverse mortgage loan that turns the equity in your home into tax-free cash. You can use the cash for whatever you want. Pay off medical bills, credit cards, travel, and start to enjoy your retirement. Best of all, you still own your own home. Call now. Find out how you can qualify for a life without monthly mortgage payments. Call now and we will send you a free DVD that will explain if a reverse mortgage is right for you. Call the number on your screen right now. No obligation, just education. Mortgage professionals, are you looking for a company that values you as a loan officer? One that can provide you with the tools you need to grow your business at your pace? Then look no further than CHL Mortgage. CHL Mortgage provides you with a full range of residential loan products and services. You'll be backed by an exceptionally trained team of professionals that can take your clients as seriously as you do. Your clients will be treated with dedicated service, personal integrity, and exceptional professionalism. You'll be able to guide them in the right loan with competitive rates and keep them on the road to achieving life's goals. To get started on advancing your career, call Dino with CHL Mortgage at 949-720-1616. That's CHL Mortgage, 949-720-1616. Back to Money Matters with Dino. My name is Dino Katsiamethis, and I'm your host, and I want to thank you for listening. Um, today, we're talking about structuring, the mastery of structuring real estate deals for profit, and we have two fantastic people here today, Aaron Mazrillo and Dino Champagne. And uh, just before the break, we were talking about uh, 1031 exchanges. So, Dino, I want to pick up right there, if we could. And I know one of the, one of the, the key components to doing a successful 1031 exchange is exchanging for like property. But I've heard many people take that definition and turn it upside down. So it, it, tell us what the real definition is. Okay. When you're talking about 1031 and like-kind property, you're right. A lot of people pit, pigeonhole it and say, well, if I sold a single-family rental, like what Aaron has, I have to buy a single-family rental. If I sell an apartment building, I have to buy an apartment building. And that actually is not the case. The, the simple way to look at like-kind property in the real section, the real portion of the 1031 section, real property section, is – Investment real estate for investment real estate. So I can go from an apartment building to multiple single family rentals, or I can go from an industrial building to uh, a retail shopping center, or I can go to uh, Walgreens to uh, an office building. So it's very, very broad. I can go from raw land to income producing, which is another part where people may have some raw land and they, they're now re willing to sell it. What can they do to get some money so they might go out and buy some single-family rentals or some apartment buildings? So very, very broad when the it. term for like kind is in the 1031. Okay. Aaron, let's switch gears over to seller financing. I know that you're a, a big fan of it. So I love seller financing. I think it, it's the right strategy for everybody. Well, tell us why. <laughs> tell us why and some success, success stories. Well, I can tell you about I, I just picked up the keys to a house that I closed on a couple days ago, and it's a seller finance deal. So 1031s, and I, I do 1031s all the time. I'm constantly horse trading my properties, and they're a great strategy for a lot of different reasons. I use 1031s purely for upgrading my portfolio. So I'm out in the Inland Empire, my office is in Riverside, and when I started in the market, I was buying north of the 10 freeway, east of the 15. So that's kind of uh, Rialto, Fontana, San Bernardino. Uh, they're nice markets, but they are kind of entry level. And what I wanted to do was buy out there, grow my money up through appreciation and, and paying down debt, and then 1031 into better quality rental properties below the 60 freeway in Riverside. So that's why I use 1031s. At some point, um, well, one thing to consider, let me backtrack a little bit. We had mentioned, uh, we had talked a little bit off off uh, radio about partnerships. So there's one silent partner in every deal you, that you do, and that's the IRS. You can never forget about the IRS being involved in your deal. So when you do a 1031, you're essentially telling the IRS, hey, I got your money, but I'm gonna hold on to a little bit longer, so you just sit on the sidelines, and I'm gonna keep working the money, and eventually I'll pay you. So you can do 1031s all the way up until the day you die, and then you pass the you know the step that bases along to your children, and they pay the, the, the tax at that point. Or you can decide at some point, you know what, I want to cash out. I'm tired of being a landlord. I'm just, I just want my money and I want to go have some fun. And that's where a guy like me, uh, I come in and, and I'm the perfect solution for that seller. So if you sell today 
and I would recommend waiting a couple more weeks and selling on January 1st, and then you can wait until, you know, <laughs> instead of waiting till April 15th to pay your taxes, you have until April 15th of 2015, so you right. get a little bit extension. So Make, makes sense. You know, yeah, so just, you know, relax for a couple more weeks and sell in January. <laughs> so it, when you sell now, you're going to you're gonna have depreciation recapture. So you've, you've bought the house, and you've owned it for X number of years, and every year you have to, whether you take it on your taxes or not, you're gonna you're gonna take the, the IRS assumes that you've taken the depreciation, so you have to pay it. So I would tell your accountant, put my depreciation in there, whether you need it or not. You're gonna pay it. So mm -hmm. you have that recapture, and I believe that's taxed at normal or, or earned income. Correct. Twenty five percent. Twenty five percent. Okay. So that's due in the year of the sale. There's no way to avoid that. Is at least not that I'm aware of. Right. So what you can put off is the um, the capital gains. So by selling through seller financing, you only pay capital gains tax on the amount that you receive in the year of the sales. So if you sell to me uh, now and I give you 10% down and some of that is principal and the rest of it is, is uh, the, the uh, capital gains part, you'll pay tax on that. But you only pay, if we do like a 30 year note, you're only gonna pay the capital gains tax on the principal payments received over that 30 years every year. So it's a way to to offset that big tax hit all in one year, and it gives you a really nice long-term income. So let's break it down like this. Let's say you net $100,000 now, after all your taxes and everything. You got 100 grand in the bank, what do you get in what do, savings account? 0.01% interest, <laughs> and your expenses are $1,000 a month. Well, after uh, 100 months, you're broke, you're right. out. So let's say you sell to me and I agree to pay you 5% interest on that equity, which, you know, it's not money, but I will, I will pay interest on that. So let's say you're going to sell to me and I pay you 5% and every month I'm paying you uh, over a 30 year, it's going to be about $680 a month over 30 years. Yep. So you can see Makes how that's a sense. much better strategy, right? And if the house was renting for $1,000 a month and you think, well, I'm going to lose that income. Well, you're not because out of that thousand, you don't get to put all that in your pocket. And a lot of people forget that you got to pay the taxes. You got to pay insurance. You have vacancy expenses. You have, you know, overhead, which I call management, but it's overhead. You drive out to the property. Gas isn't free, right? You sign a new lease that takes time and energy. You advertise, you're looking for a tenant. Yep. All that's time sure. and energy. Sure. And, it, and it's a cost out of your pocket. So if you get rid of all that and now you're just getting a check from me, you can put almost the majority of that in your pocket. Clear. You don't have any of those expenses anymore. And that's why I really like seller financing. And I think it's a great solution for people that I call enders. They're at the end of the landlord business. They don't want to be involved anymore, but they still enjoy that monthly check. Great solution, seller financing. Love it. And Aaron, what was your website again? Because we, we're running out of time, but you have so many, um, uh, I guess, ways to help people either get out of a home, get into a home, and a million di different things. So I want people to be able to look you up. It's Aaron, the house buyer.com, A A R O N thehousebuyer.com thehousebuyer.com okay so we're running out of time and, and I'd like to say that our show is very educational um, and just rich content but I want to turn it just for a second and as Aaron says the kind of entertainment you just can't pay for and Aaron I want you to tell us that <laughs> that uh, goat and mice uh, oh, story, the goat story. This... but quickly because we're running out of time so again my number one rule of landlording don't rent to family or friends and and here was a situation where a guy called me up he said hey I got a house for sale and uh, my nephew's living in the house. And I didn't want to go see the house, but he said, you got to go out and you got to take a look at it. It needs work. So this was early in my career. I drove out, we went and looked at the house and it was like one o'clock in the afternoon. The nephew answers the door. He's just blitz drunk. Uh, he's walking around the house. This is a weekday. Walking around the house, we get out in the backyard and he has a pet goat. And all of a sudden <laughs> out of nowhere, he pulls a handgun out of his shorts and he's pointing it at his goat's head and he's got a beer in one hand and he's just talking to us and, it, it, and he didn't look aggressive or anything, but he's just standing there with a gun at his pet goat's head and a beer. And I'm thinking, you know, if I buy this house in his mind, maybe he's thinking I've got nowhere else to go. I've got nothing left to lose. The goat goes, then this guy goes, and then I go, you know, I have no idea. So you just have to be careful with people. There's some crazy things out there. All right. We ran out of time. We're not going to have the, uh, the my story, but if you call me at 949-720-1616, I will tell you that story. It's absolutely hilarious. It's a good story. Um, today we got something a little, a little different. Uh, and I just wanted to save two minutes for it. Cause my, my family came by to visit and my uh, kids are here and I want to ask what a eight and a six year old uh, views as a really good investment in real estate. So we're going to ask them. Hang on two seconds so I can grab them. 
Okay, so here they are. We have uh, Kylie, eight years old, Ava, six years old, and Austin, a year and a half, who's uh, sitting in my lap trying to grab the microphone. He's the rock star in the group. Um, hey. And we're almost out of time. So, <laughs> girls, I want to ask you, since you're the only ones that talk, um, if you were to go out and buy a house right now, what kind of house would you buy? What would you want to see in that house? An art room. An art room? What else? Bowling alley. A bowling alley. Ava, what about you? Um, uh, indoor swimming pool and yeah. a music room. And a music room? What about a tree house? Yes. 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 So if, and how much would a house like that cost, do you think? Mm, a bajillion dollars. That's a good deal, I think, isn't it? I don't know. Ava, how much do you think a house like that uh, would cost? Austin's upset because he, he, I'm not letting him talk. Um. <laughs> All right, Ava, time's up. I want to I wanna thank everybody for, uh, for listening today. I want to thank Aaron Mazzarello and Dino Champagne for being on our show. Thank you so much, for, not only for the great stories, but the excellent advice. And if you'd like to get in touch with them, I, I ask you to look us up online at moneymatterswithdino.com or you can call us direct at 949-720-1616. That's 949-720-1616. And I will do my best to answer your questions or put you in touch directly with either Aaron or Dino. Um, again, thank you, Phil, for taking all the time to, to do the research and write the show. I want to thank you very much for listening. Every single week, I enjoy coming on this show. I enjoy doing all this because of you. And thank you again for your support. I also want to thank my, my children, Ava, Kylie, and Austin, for coming to visit today. And want to wish everybody a great, happy Thanksgiving weekend. Thank you, and we'll see you next week. Bye.